The term cosmology refers to the way one understands the structure of the universe. The Israelites believed in a cosmology that was common among the ancient civilizations of the biblical world. It encompassed three parts built up like a layer cake, a heavenly realm, an earthly realm for humans, and an underworld for the dead. This three-tier system is reflected in the Ten Commandments. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. The biblical writers thought of the earth as a flat disk atop vast waters. Rising from the deep waters below were the foundations of the world, which held the earth firmly in place. And this idea is reflected in several places throughout Scripture. The foundations of the earth belong to the Lord. On them he has set the world. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you know. Who measured it? I'm sure you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? What was it built on? Who laid its most important stone? He placed the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. Beneath the earth lay the realm of the dead, often referred to by the Hebrew word Sheol. The Hebrew word for earth, Eretz, is also used, since the graves dug by humans represented gateways to the underworld. This underworld was also connected to the great deep, the uninhabitable abyss beneath everything. In Job, this realm is described in watery terms. The dead tremble under the waters and their inhabitants. Sheol is naked before God, and Abaddon has no covering. Jonah's description is perhaps the most vivid. Water encompassed me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Ancient Israelites did not think of the sky as a layer of gas. They believed the heavens were separated from the earth by a solid, glass-like dome. This view is reflected in Job. Can you, like him, spread out the skies, hard as a cast metal mirror? Above the solid dome or firmament was an endless area of water. This idea of an area of land and air, sandwiched between water above and water below, is presented in the opening of Genesis. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. The firmament surrounded the earth, and its edge met the horizon, the boundary between light and darkness. It was supported by pillars or foundations thought to be the tops of mountains whose peaks appeared to touch the sky. The earth trembled and shook. The pillars of the heavens rocked back and forth. They trembled because the Lord was angry. The sky dome had portals which God could open to let the waters above fall to the earth. This idea is evident in the story of Noah and his ark. Noah was 600 years old. It was the seventeenth day of the second month of the year. On that day, all of the springs at the bottom of the oceans burst open. God opened the windows of the sky. Rain fell on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And how did the rain end? The springs at the bottom of the oceans had been closed. The windows of the sky had also been closed. And the rain had stopped falling from the sky. God and his heavenly hosts were thought to dwell above the firmament. Thick clouds veil him so that he does not see and he walks on the vault of heaven. The Lord builds his palace high in the heavens. He lays its foundation on the earth. He sends for the waters in the clouds. Then he pours them out on the surface of the land. His name is the Lord. is locked in space and it stays wherever I put it. You see, this is quantum trapping. So it's actually floating above the surface. Yeah, it's not floating, it's locked above the surface.
saw the sunrises, Bonnie. I think I know what I am now. There's, there's a world built on top of ours. People live there. If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. of wisdom and fate so. are you certain that those conductors of yours can withstand the energy surge long enough for transference this artifact, I am certain of nothing. see a, uh, a glowing blue-purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave, and this sound wave, this sound wave and God said, and God said, and, God said. and this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable.